Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to the DLD Europe Power Lunch. Our focus is, of course, Europe. And I want to offer you an amazing menu, a menu for the good of Europe. We have to load Europe with an optimistic and courageous, a productive, innovative view. What are you adding for Europe? We are adding at this lunch a wonderful menu with amazing speakers who all are convinced that Europe needs a new vision. Our continent has so much to offer, such a diversity of talent, culture and borderless creativity. We can only lose if we don't harvest this enormous potential. The game is not over, it's only just beginning and this week we'll show you why. Please stay tuned and remember that we every day of the week we have another lunch. Elizabeth Löwenburg Brzezinski is principal at Acton Capital, where she invests in game-changing companies and digital native brands. Elizabeth is passionate about Europe. She has worked for the European Investment Bank and supports pan-European initiatives in the fields of sustainability and diversity. We have asked Elizabeth to contribute to the DLD Europe lunch break because she believes Europe has the power, the resources and the opportunities to change our world for the better by harvesting low-hanging fruits that have a concrete and tangible outcome for Europeans as well as people and businesses worldwide. Distinguished DLD community, I'm Elisabeth, I'm an investor with Acton Capital and we are a venture growth fund investing in sustainable business models. I'm shooting this video today off the Amalfi Coast in Italy where I'm currently spending my honeymoon. And what could be more fitting to the occasion and then talk to you today about love. Love and how digitization and the climate crisis and its disruptive energy can ignite a new kind of love for Europe. But let me explain. We humans are obsessed about the moon. Elon Musk, SpaceX, moonshots, man on the moon, mission-oriented investments, you name it. We humans also still believe that money can buy you love that a 750 billion euro recovery plan can buy the love of European citizens for Europe. But let me break it to you, it won't. Not once in history has Europe been about love, not even about friendship. It has been about steel and coal, trade and tariff, about the absence of war. But the absence of war is not peace and it for sure is not love. So we believe what Europe needs most today more than money, more than moonshots, is love. But not the kind of burning passion and fire of desire. More the kind of everyday affection, appreciation and friendship of European citizens for each other and for Europe. And with the current forces of digitization, climate crisis on top of the COVID pandemic, we have the historic chance to ignite this kind of love and to create a new positive narrative for Europe. Let's talk about the climate crisis first. Throughout history, people have looked for outside enemies to create national identities, especially in times of crisis. Today, we don't need an outside nation state enemy. We have the climate crisis, around which the people of Europe can rally for the ecological, sustainable transformation of the economy. And we as investors ask you and all of us to hold finance accountable for climate action, to unlock the power of finance for climate action. Let me explain how. We at Acton have been one of the early supporters of an initiative called Leaders for Climate Action, which resembles over 500 digital entrepreneurs and investors across Europe that each and individually commit to take personal action for CO2 reduction and the transformation of their business models towards sustainability. As we see investors, we and other funds are implementing the sustainability clause, which is a legal obligation in our term sheets and investment documentation and asks each of our companies to adopt a climate strategy and to pay highest management attention to the matter. 
And guess what? Entrepreneurs and the founders are loving it. They are loving the sustainability clause and are fully on board with it. So our message to institutional investors, LPs in funds and shareholders in financial institutions is hold finance accountable for climate action. Ask equity investors to request climate action from their participation and banks and creditors to request climate action from their counterparts. And many of them are already on the way towards it. From the EU, we need a taxonomy and a common framework of what impact, sustainability and climate action really means to avoid greenwashing, make ESG more than a fig leaf and standardize implementation. Second, we need digital projects which make an everyday meaningful impact on everyday citizens' lives. A little bit like the roaming fees abolition can be experienced across Europe in the areas of digital health, education and government. Let's start with a pan-European Corona app. Movement across borders is one of the core European freedoms, one of the biggest successes of European integration, and it cannot be endangered by this or any future pandemic. The current standards and interoperability frameworks at a European level across applications are just not enough. We need one European app. Second, we can use the current crisis for a digital transformation of the education system that brings European students across countries close together at an early age and fosters European friendships. We can imagine a European student platform where students and pupils can create language tandems, virtual learning groups, and where a common core European curriculum in MINT subjects and the humanities can emerge. And last, we need digital government. Ability for electronic signatures, safe and universally accepted payments in Europe, and let's take the European elections in 2023 as a goal where every European citizen can cast his or her vote electronically. We believe that most of these achievements wouldn't be so much a question of money. The German government allegedly spent 20 million euros or so on the development of the Corona app. We believe that for less than half of that money, you could develop and implement a European-wide solution. But what we do need is more attention and investment for digital transformation from European pension funds and European insurance companies. We cannot leave that asset class to outside European investors in the principality. We need more growth capital for digital business models and digital transformation in Europe. Last but not least, we need agile, quick and effective governance and decision-making processes at a European level. Here we believe the European Union could learn a lot from private investors and private capital. In the VC and PE industry, we are used to balance the safety of one with the ability of the group to act in our investment agreements. We work with qualified majorities and we avoid blocking minorities at all costs. The startup method is to try out new things, pilot, test, take effective feedback early on, and if it works, expand, and if it doesn't work, abandon quickly. This startup method, together with effective governance mechanisms, is what the European Union can learn from investors. We believe that Europe has the chance to show the world there is a third way to achieve rapid digital transformation, a way which combines digital transformation with protection of private data, privacy in general, protection of civil liberties, and which combines digital transformation with a social welfare state. We believe that this is what Europe can show to the world and work European Union can learn from private investors. So let's get started. Let's take two areas of precise digital implementation in public health and education. Let's take precise climate action and hold finance accountable to do climate action as one of the biggest levers that we have in the economy on other business models. And last but not least, let's create a coalition of the willing. Let's try out sandboxes of innovation to act quickly.
Because we have to act now. Wir müssen jetzt handeln. Il faut agir maintenant. Mushime Teras Ciaobac. Andre Sud has been deputy governor and member of the executive board of the Bank of Estonia since 2001. He's also a member of the, of the supervisory council of the Estonian Financial Supervision Authority and a member of the Estonian parliament. We have invited Andres because Europe needs a new narrative, an optimistic and a courageous one. He is working on the dream of an agile, innovative and lean Europe, built, of course, on the ESG pillars. Dear DLD community, we are living in exceptional times. COVID-19 has changed our way of living and our habits big time. Some of the change is temporary, some of it will be lasting. Video conferencing, for example, used to be rare, but it has become quite common nowadays. Working, shopping, studying remotely is not unusual any longer. And this has been all necessary because of uh, public health grounds. Of course, in, as in any change, uh, we have to put a high demands on the leaders and leadership throughout the society, be it in business, be it in education, or be it in politics. I'm very happy to share with you three thoughts today. My first thought is about democracy and freedom. Exceptional times require exceptional measures. And of course, a byproduct of a corona crisis has been significant limitations what have been imposed on our basic freedoms, freedoms what we used to take as granted. I, have, I was born behind the Iron Curtain and I personally know very well what freedom means. And that's why I strongly believe that protecting freedoms and democracy today is as important as it was 30 years ago. We must remain open as societies, even though the COVID crisis has turned our lives up, upside down in so many places. Normal times will return sooner or later. It is our common duty to make sure that this period of limited freedoms will do as little damage as possible to our fabric of society. We must make sure that free movement of people, capital and goods will remain a core of the European values. That is what we need in Europe. We need freedom and democracy, not building of new walls, in order to be stronger in a post-COVID world. We also must not leave behind any children because of uh, being underprivileged. So everybody needs to have an access to education. This is what we should deliver, this is our duty and commitment, and this is what we can deliver. It takes leadership to protect freedom and democracy. This is what I stand for as a member of parliament, and this is what I contribute to the future of Europe. My second thought is about environment, sustainability and governance. Corona crisis reinforces the need to direct our societies back to a more sustainable development path. And the same goes for businesses. Massive build-up of public and private debt cannot last forever, even though the money seems cheap and plentiful. Instead, we need to use this period of low interest rates to finance the change in the economy that makes our economic ecosystem more efficient and more environmentally friendly. This is what our planet expects for us. This is what the next generations expect for us. And this is what we can and should deliver. It is also about how we as leaders inspire and motivate people. It is not the choice uh, between the wartime and peacetime leadership. I don't see it that way. It is much more about the governance that is transparent leadership that is engaging and offering young 
and elderly people alike a meaningful opportunity to demonstrate their skills and abilities and to make their dreams come true. My third thought is about innovation. We should put Europe back as a global leader of innovation and technology. Corona crisis has been accelerating global trends. It's not reversing them. What we see is the US leadership waning. We see much less multilateral cooperation and we see China rising very fast, technologically, economically, politically. Corona has forced us all to innovate at home, in businesses, in governments, in parliaments. Let's keep this innovation drive and let's turn Europe out of a crisis stronger than we entered. Because Europe together has the scale and size, has capital and skills to become a global leader in innovation and technology. But we can only achieve it if we act together, not separate it. All we need is courage and leadership in science, businesses and politics. This is what I commit to deliver and contribute to the future of Europe. I wish you all well and stay safe. Günther Oettinger is the former European Commissioner for Budget and Human Resources, as well as for the digital economy and society. With his long-standing political expertise and his insights into what makes the European Union a unique achievement worth fighting for, we have invited Günther to the DLD lunch break to give his optimistic statement about what Europe needs to maintain it's standing in the world, its values and its vision. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, DLD is a network, a great platform for communication, for exchange of views between continents, between people, between industries, between representatives of our research sector of politics, of media. And so I'm happy that uh, the Bora Media Group via DLD is organizing year by year in Munich, but in New York City, um, elsewhere in many uh, capitals and metropoles, such a, a platform. And uh, a few years ago, it was the first time in Brussels our European uh, capital. I've been there year by year, uh, a one-day conference organized by uh, Steffi Czerny and her uh, team. And Europe, uh, we have to Europeanize our digital policies. If you see here uh, Silicon Valley and the US, and on the other hand, uh, China, uh, Europe, Germany, Bavaria, we have to avoid to be in a sandwich position. We need an own digital sovereignty. Uh, organizing a digital single market, a digital union, coming to common uh, standards, avoiding over-regulation, uh, having fair regulation, having research projects as quantum technology is or uh, as um, uh, supercomputing uh, is, uh, we need a best infrastructure for our data flow, we need skills, and we need young people, and we need best universities, uh, fair for. And DLD has always is bringing together, all of them. And I'm sure that um, Europe will play an important role when next year DLD is uh, organized uh, again. Whenever DLD came to Brussels, it was a pleasure for us as members of the Commission, as members of the Parliament, and we have a lot of uh, competent people now as well. Ursula von der Leyen, our Commission President, Madame Westheyer, or Thierry Breton in lead for digital policies, or Roberto Viola, our Director General, 
or Axel Voss as a member of the European Parliament. There are a lot of people who are happy to get input from your side, from DLD, from uh, all of um, our uh, participants uh, being present uh, on a DLD level. And so uh, I'm no more in politics, but I'm accompanying and observing what is happening. And I'm sure that whatever is uh, possible in these difficult times, it will be used by DLD and Tobot Broda Media. All the best. Good luck. Thank you for being here. Thank you for our, being our guest. See you tomorrow. <laughs>